And now, everybody, we get to this game. Yoshi Topsy Turvy, or Yoshi's Universal Gravitation, depending on where you play your games from, was one of those tragic stories of Nintendo thinking a bit too experimentally with their precious IP. Instead of being produced in-house, this game was licensed to Artoon, a small and somewhat quirky Japanese company who was tasked with bringing the power of motion controls to a Game Boy Advance title. Topsy Turvy's big claim to fame was that the cartridge included a gyroscope, which allowed the player to detect the tilt of the console that allowed the player to interact with the world in a totally unique way. One of the several games that came with tilting controls, such as Kirby Tilt and Tumble. Of course, with this being the case, the game is a proper shit show to emulate properly, requiring the ROM to be modded by the fans to recognize button presses as tilts in order to be a functional game, because the Visual Boy Advance emulator's in-house tilt control does not work for this game specifically, which is pretty odd considering three ROMs of Game Boy games used it, but whatever. After fiddling around online, I managed to get the emulator running the game properly, and it definitely wasn't worth the effort. Like Yoshi's Safari that preceded it, the game basically lived or died on the innovation of the game's tilt controls, since it was the only new idea that Topsy Turvy was bringing to the table. Otherwise, the game is pretty much the standard Yoshi formula that we've seen from Super Mario World 2. Egg laying and throwing mechanics, flutter jumps, moving platforms, and all that jazz. The reason for why this is happening is the usual Nintendo-flavored nonsense. Bowser invaded Yoshi's Island for an amazingly vague reason, and so a magical spirit decided to trap the entire island inside the pages of a book. Obviously, Yoshi and his entire clan was unhappy about being trapped alongside the Koopa clan, and so through a friendly spirit managed to make a deal with the literature spirit. If Yoshi can somehow trap Bowser inside of another sealing mechanism, he will free Yoshi's Island from the book's pages and let everyone go about their lives. The only other problem is that Yoshi has to get the spirits controlling the other chapters to be on his side, which means dealing with their stupid challenges to prove Yoshi's worth in his quest to defeat Bowser. Considering that the spirits are controllers of the book's pages and Bowser is still wreaking havoc on everything, shouldn't the spirits just be on Yoshi's side by default since Bowser is torching the entire novel they live in from the inside of it? Well, whatever. It's a platformer game, so the plot doesn't have to make all the sense in the world as long as the gameplay is fun and the levels are challenging. You can tell where I'm going with this, right? Yep, not only were the tilting controls a failure in innovation, the game itself was as boring and a waste of code as Yoshi's story, and that was because of designing a bunch of platforming levels for the player to enjoy. r decided to cut a lot of corners, and basically made one of those mini-game modes from other games where you have to get a set number of points or beat a time limit, and made a full game around that crap. For the entire runtime of the title, Yoshi has to go to a handful of levels between 6 and 12 levels and defeat the challenges of a number of those levels, usually around 50 to 75% of the available levels have to have their challenges beaten in order to beat the chapter. This is because the spirits of the book require Yoshi to beat their challenges to prove their worth to whatever spirit they are trying to praise. The spirits each have their own set of challenges. One will make you not kill enemies, one puts everything on a time limit, one spirit changes the entire level they are a part of into a race against death, and then one spirit makes you murder all the level's minions. Each spirit gives you the same challenge over and over again, and in insipid and small levels that make you perform arbitrary nonsense in order to get to the ending medal. Combine this minigame gimmick of the game with half of the controls being based around the tilting controls, which are unintuitive to say the least, because the entire level can only be rotated a maximum of 45 degrees, and since the animation is not where it needs to be for something like this, even when the level is fully tilted, it still looks like Yoshi is running up sheer walls. And with any sort of momentum being as realistic as a Final Fantasy game, you pretty much have to hope for the best when faced with any of the physics puzzles of the game. It doesn't feel like a nice game to control because none of the movement controls relate to consistent physics and it makes Yoshi feel like he's just flying around under whims of code that can barely keep up with the central tilting idea of the game that it's in. 
It's clumsy, finicky, and half-assed as all hell, which is a huge deal-breaker for any game trying to build itself around a physics engine. Yoshi's Topsy Turvy does try to have variety by combining some of the spirits onto the same levels to give you challenges like get to the end of the level by this time without killing as many minions, collect enough money and avoid the giant wall of death, and sometimes it'll be a collect-a-thon of money and killing minions. Thankfully, you never have to do 100% of any of the chapters, so if the levels are annoying you, then you can just ditch them. It doesn't matter. But for the most part, the game's short levels and refusal to add in more than six challenge types ends up making the game trite, repetitive, and an incredibly irritating time sink of a game. I'm not sure if we mentioned this before, but did I say the graphics are also awful? It's like Yoshi's Story, but with only a third of the effort put in. Artoon tried to do the picture book backgrounds and graphics, but with so little effort, variety, and animation budget that it looks like the most average and standardized version of the graphics style. In games that use this well, like Mario Party 3, the art style was varied and incredibly stark with big, bold lines and bright colors. To do a cartoonified video game, the graphics have to stand out and be more front and center than any other game, and if you only quarter assets, then you get topsy-turvy, where all of the backgrounds and art assets fade into a forgettable backdrop for an already boring-ass game. The final boss fight with Bowser, which was the time where r is putting some new ideas on screen was the biggest floundering of topsy-turvy. Bowser is using petty attacks and useless fireballs to take on Yoshi, who has the power to tilt the entire world against his favor, and after the actual fight stops, Bowser is then teleported to a giant fire pit that Yoshi can just waggle the tilt sensor back and forth to kill him that requires no effort, time, dodging, or skill to accomplish. It's like a Call of Duty QTE ball fight. I almost would have told Yoshi's sidekick spirit that we should have made the joke ending the official one rather than turning one of the gaming's greatest villains into yet another two-bit unfunny joke ending that doesn't do anything for anybody. Yoshi Topsy Turvy at this point is one of the most impossible games to play outside of the Windows 95 library without going back and purchasing an original cartridge and console for it to be played on. I have zero doubt that this game isn't on Virtual Console and trying to emulate it is such a chore with requiring a ROM mod to make it even work that it's nowhere near worth the hassle to do so. This game is a forgettable waste of publishing money that should have gone to literally anything else, and yet another pitiful showing by Yoshi's protagonist series. At this point in the Wario release schedule, we had already done Wario Land 2 and Wario Blast, which showed that the Nintendo handheld team and third parties were upholding a high standard of quality for the greedy protagonist. But when it comes to the much more wholesome Yoshi, Nintendo is letting it wallow in a mud puddle and just passing it down the line every few years and hoping for the best. Hopefully Nintendo starts putting the cute dinosaur in some solid projects. Otherwise, Yoshi should probably just go the way that Wario did and just stop getting games developed for him anymore because all the developers have lost interest in making a good game surrounding Mario's spin-off friends. They're still making games to this day featuring the dependable horse of platformers, but if the quality of products continues like this, then all I see ahead is an excruciating and drawn-out death of this IP's value. Let's wait with held breath by tagging the scoreboard to topsy-turvy. And give you guys an upside-down victory for gamers, because you all deserve it. Thanks for watching. Thank you.